Before we go on any further, you need to know um, some special values when it comes to doing trig equations. Now, this is when a question asks you to find an exact value. You're going to be looking for one of these special types of um, situations. Now, these come from the, what we call identity triangles, so or, or unit triangles sometimes. We have this triangle here, which is an isosceles triangle with sides of 1. That means that that angle there is 45 degrees, and the hypotenuse is the square root of 2, just using Pythagoras. From there, we can get uh, some useful values for sine, uh, cos, and tan. We can also use this equilateral triangle that has sides of 2, which would give us an angle of 60 degrees. Now, if we drop that perpendicular there to make a right angle triangle, then we've got that side being 1, we have a 30 degrees and we'll just rub out the other half we don't need. So now we have this useful triangle here to get some other values where that side there would be the square root of 3, again just using Pythagoras. Now from those two triangles we get a bunch of useful results and they can be summarised in this table. So if we have our angles of 30, 45 and 60 we can work out sine, cos and tan of each of those using those triangles. It's really good to have this table summarised somewhere for a quick, easy reference. And right before an exam, I would recommend that you cram those um, uh, results so that you've got them quickly at the front of your memory. Now, you can also use this in radians as well. So it's helpful to know that uh, 30 degrees is the same as pi by 6, 45 is pi by 4, and 60 is pi by 3. Okay, some examples then. We want to find the exact value of sine of 120 degrees. So looking at our graph of sine, we've got it goes through the x-axis at 180, there's 120, so that will match up with, using the symmetry of the graph, 60 degrees. So we want to find sine of 60, which from our table before is root 3 over 2. And if you can't remember the table, you can quickly sketch out one of those triangles to the side to figure it out. Okay, next one, we're going to solve this equation. So rearrange it and you get cos theta equals 3 quarters. So here's our cos curve between 0 and 360. We want to know when it equals 3 quarters. So we're looking for that value there. And the other one just at the other half of it up there. So theta, from our calculator we get 41.4 degrees, then we use the symmetry of the graph to find the other one, so we're going to do 360 minus 41.4, so we get 318.6 degrees. Okay, next, tan squared, equals, tan squared theta equals 3, so that means that tan theta is plus or minus the square root of 3, and we're looking for theta between minus pi and pi, so we'll draw our little tan curve there between minus pi and pi. We're looking for where it's equal to the positive root 3 or the negative root 3. So we're looking for that value there, which gives us pi by 3, if we read off of our uh, table that we did on the previous slide. And then we can match up the ones that um, follow the properties of this graph, repeating every 180. So uh, that other one that I've marked on there will be at pi by 3 take away pi, since our uh, graph repeats every pi. So that gives us minus 2 by, by pi by 3. Then using the properties of the graph, that bit there matches uh, to the, the bit above it that goes up to pi by 3. So that'll give us minus pi by 3. And then that other one, we add on a pi and we'll get 2 pi by 3. Okay, sine 2 theta equals 0 0.9. Now, the important thing here is that 2 theta um, is that is inside of that sine function, so we need to be careful with this one. So if theta is running between 0 and 360, we need to look at the range that 2 theta could have. That could run between 0 and 720, so that when we divide by 2, we're back into the range we want between 0 and 360. Okay, so we've got to carry our graph on a little. We're looking for when it's equal to 0 0.9, so you can see we're going to get four solutions. So 2 theta is the inverse sine of 0.9. Now, as soon as you do inverse sine, that's when you have to go and find all your repeated roots. You don't divide by 2 and then find your repeated roots. So 64.2 is our first one. Then using the symmetry of the graph, we can find all of the others. 
Then we can divide each of those by 2 to get our final answer for theta. And just a quick check, all of those are in our range of 0 to 360 for theta. Now, if we hadn't found those repeated roots above the 360, we would have missed off four, two out of the four possible solutions. Okay, next one, we've got tan of theta plus pi by 4 is equal to 1. So we need to adjust the range that we're actually going to consider and add pi by 4 to uh, each of the ends. Uh, so it's going to run between pi by 4 and pi plus pi by 4, which is, of course, 5 pi by 4. So theta plus pi by 4 is going to be the inverse or inverse tan of 1, which is pi by 4 by reading off of our table of values we had on the first slide. Now, thinking about our graph, we want to know when tan um, is going to be equal to 1. So it's those two values there. Our first one we can get is pi by 4, and then the repeated one, um, which we notice that pi by 4 is only just within our range, but it is in our range. And then the second one will appear 180 degrees or pi later. So we add on a pi from there and we get 5 pi by 4, which again is just inside of our range. So now theta will be those values minus the pi by 4, so that's 0 and pi. Okay, a bit more complex now. We've got cos of a fifth theta minus 90 equals a half. So let's adjust the range that we need to look at. We'll do a fifth of 180 and take away 90 to get our end values. So thinking about the graph, we're just looking in this particular range here between minus 126 and minus 54. So inverse of a half gives us this value here. Um, now if you do it on your calculator, you get 60 degrees, but that's not in the range that we want to look at. So we need to think about the symmetry of the graph. That's also going to give us minus 60 degrees. So then rearranging, if a fifth theta minus 90 makes minus 60, we're going to add on the 90 times by 5, and you get 150 degrees. All right, next one, sine of 3 theta minus 20 equals 1 over root 2. And we've got a range between 0 and 180. So adjust the range, times by 3, subtract 20. So that's the new range that we need to look within. Just add a little bit more there. And we're looking for when it's equal to 1 over root 2. So we're going to get four solutions. Now the first one we know from our table of um, special values is 45 degrees. So then using the symmetry of the graph and the fact that it repeats, we are going to get all four of those values. And then theta, we take each of those values, we add on 20 and divide by 3 to get our theta value for each of them.